welcome to... Turtle Creek! What's up, everybody? So, if you've ever owned or operated any kind of band mill for any length of time, you're going to find, within a reasonably short manner of time, that you are inundated with dull blades. And the first thing you're going to want to do is get them sharpened and you're like, hey, I know, easy peasy, I'll slap them in a box and send them off and get them sharpened. Well, I'm going to give you a few reasons why you might not want to do that. First reason. Hmm? Moolah. Greenbacks. Right? We all have a little bit and we all want to keep it. That's the moral of the story. So every time you send out 10 blades, you got $8 per blade plus shipping and handling. So it's over $100, depending on where you got to ship them to. Then you have the, you know, or am I gonna get my blades back? Is UPS gonna lose them, you know? Not that UPS is into losing stuff, but you know, stuff happens, right? So then you also have the hidden fee and the not so blatantly obvious fee of now I don't have any saw blades. I can't saw wood, right? Duh. So now you have to march your little happy butt out there and buy an additional 10 blades. Or even quadruple that if you got a big enough outfit and you're really churning out some lumber. So it gets pretty expensive and it's ongoing, right? So like if you get your blade sharpened, 10 blades once every three months, that's 400 bucks. That's a lot, you know, when you could avoid it. Second reason, time. That's it folks, time, right? You ship your blades off and you don't ever know when you're gonna get them back. Even before COVID, they were like 30 days out, the, the place that I would roll with. During COVID, they were six months out. Everybody and their grandmother wanted to cut up some wood, okay? <clears throat> there you are. I mean, you're down for six months. You know how many blades you have to buy in order to keep milling for six months? It's, it's just, it's mind boggling. Third reason. The straw that broke the camel's back was the fact that I would ship 10 blades off and I would get eight back. I'd ship 10 blades off and I'd get seven back. The facility I was shipping them to would deem them unfit for duty and then they would just disappear into thin air. And I'm kind of like, uh, I would like to see them, you know, or maybe make Damascus blades out of them or their mind give them back. And all I heard was crickets chirping. And I thought, you know what? I could probably do a little better than this. And last but not least, control, right? I mean, who doesn't want to have control about a critical component of your business or hobby? I mean, let's face it, folks. A Lamborghini is a paperweight without tires. A sawmill is worthless without a saw blade. I mean, that's what it boils down to. So this video is going to be all about how I sharpen my blades by hand because I just needed that sense of security knowing that I can move forward when I want to move forward how I want to move forward and why I want to move forward so we're gonna break it down for you do's and don'ts that I've run into the most efficient means that I, I come about sharpening this stuff the reasons why we're sharpening it how much to sharpen um, I think it should be like kind of like a one-stop shop you know you guys should walk away pretty happy so without further ado on with the show baby all righty then, let's, let's get down to, down to brass tacks. So, I wanted to give you guys a brief overview of my machine, horsepower, and blades, and why I selected them, and kind of just a, a quick overview. So, I got Woodmiser LT40, 35 horsepower. That's important, because when you're selecting blades <clears throat> in tooth angles, and so and so and so forth, you have to have the butt to push these things, okay? Especially if you're going through hardwoods. 158 inches it's by inch and a quarter that would be from here to here teeth spacings are seven inch seven eighths from here to here four inch tooth angle or tooth rake depending on who you talk to that's really important okay and why is it important because otherwise if you use a seven degree or an 11 degree or anything like that your lumber ends up looking like a sahari desert every time it goes from like softwood to hardwood softwood to hardwood I always had it wave, you know, if I use a seven degree tooth, I couldn't get it to plane out, you know. Oh, 45 thousandths thick, okay, that's important. Um, 
and I'll tell you why in just a second. So, now, how much do you take off? What's sharp and what's not sharp? It's just like a pocket knife, okay? You can't see a pocket knife's dull, but you can feel it. And if you looked at it with a microscope, you can see it, which we're, I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple teeth, sharpened and unsharpened. So what you wanna take off is like a thousandth of an inch. That's the only difference. All you wanna do is make that dude sharp like this. That's it, it's just a little, I mean, just a couple sparks and that sucker's sharp. Anybody got that? Any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, moving forward. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of where it gets a little bit scientific-y. First off, let's start with the, with the thickness. 035, okay, it bends more, less fatigue, less metal failure. Okay, 045 bends less than a 30, 035 prior to failing. And an 055 bends even less than an 045 prior to failing. Why is that? Because they're thicker, okay? If I take any kind of metal and I bend it over something, the inside radius is under compression, the outside radius is under uh, tension, I think they call it. Okay, that creates a constant, you know, this number, right? Over and over and over and over and over and over and over every time that thing spins. So what you end up getting is micro cracking. Now, is this actual? Is this theoretical? When does it happen? When does it not happen? I know when the blade fails, and I know that that blade failure is based on micro cracking, but how would I deem this serviceable or unserviceable based on micro cracking? Okay, so I'm a certified welding inspector and have been in the industry for over a decade, and we do a lot of NDE work. You can't see micro cracking. Micro cracking is on the grain boundary, okay? It's like if you looked at steel under a microscope and etched it, it's like gravel held together with, with other metal alloys and so forth and so on. You can't see that with a naked eye. Now, does it exist? It has to, right? Because of blade failure. So you got to weigh that in. The, the machine that, that you, you'd send it to, or you have been sending it to, takes a big swath out of this whole thing. And then their reasoning is, is that it gets rid of those micro, micro cracking. Does it? Do they do that for every blade, every tooth? I mean, that, that's, that's like, you know, it's a pretty big claim. So, something to consider moving forward is that you aren't necessarily going to be getting that. Um, you can if you want, if you wanted to take that time more power to you. I don't, okay? I just basically knock off from here to here, a thousandth of an inch, and move on. And I use an 045. Not only does it, it's a happy medium between uh, blade failure, it cuts the truest lumber. So the, the, the actual, you know, the thicker the blade, the truer your lumber is going to get. But if you only can cut a couple logs and the blade cracks in half, you, you see what I'm saying? So it's a happy medium. That's what I like. So there's a good example of an unsharpened blade. You see that little shiny spot on the tip? Right there. You see that little shiny spot? That's what you're trying to get rid of. And this is an example of one that has been sharpened. So you see there's no there's no tiny tip at all. It's just pure sharp. And I went ahead and blued it so you could see a good example of what not to do. Okay, you see how it's blued like that? You've run that tooth. Well, all right, folks, here she is, this true mechanical marvel. For all you mechanical engineers out there, try to keep up. It's just kind of a basic chainsaw sharpener. Here's the model number, if you guys, anybody cares to know. They're all generic, they're all branded different, they're all out of China. These things I think were like 50 or 60 bucks, but I found a neighbor down the road who sells them for 35 bucks. I guess he buys a crate of them, sells them, and helps out homeless kids. So I thought, hey, win-win. But I took the guard off here so you guys could see the wheel a little bit better. And so a few things I had to do was to take out the spring mechanism that holds it up. It held up, or operates via gravity. Uh, something else I had to do is to take out, there's an automatic feeder mechanism where you pull and set back, pull, set back, chainsaw blade it works, this it doesn't. And this I had to tighten in really, really tight, or I forget exactly what I had to do, but you can see that blade just sits in there. 
like so. And this dude is adjustable, so you can make it as tight and as loose as you want, so the blade doesn't kick over when it hits the hits the sharpening stone. And just kind of sits in there like this. Um, you're going to want to put up some two by fours, so they're on the same plane as the bottom of this dude. Two by fours seem to work perfect. So to go wrap your head around that. So three two by fours, I just clamp them off to the to the frame here. And then this one, there's a glue down in there. See that metal pole? Took a half inch bolt, drilled this, put a half inch hole in it, half inch bolt, half inch bolt. So it's just stobbed there. And these guys kind of hold it upright. Something you want to gonna do is put a bearing right here so that glides and what that does is it keeps it <coughs> stadium or pill shaped and the reason you want that is so it's flat going in and out of your I guess jaws for lack of a better word otherwise you have to bend it you know you have to take and bend it with your hand and you get fatigued after a while okay you can kind of see how I had to contour that stone just the, this face, not this side, but just this face. So I could get as deep down in that gullet as I could. And then as you're moving, you're, you know, you just slide that ever so gingerly forward like this. And then you lift this mechanism here. I got a, a stick, here, a stick. And I put it on my knee and I just raise it like this. And then move the blade forward and lower. Right, move it right forward. So a couple settings, this way is just 90 degrees to the jaws, okay, perpendicular. And then your tilt right here would be 4 degrees, or if you're doing a 7 degree blade, it would be 7 degrees, or you know, whatever. I just match it up to the blade. It's pretty easy to do. When you start, make a mark. That way you don't resharpen the same tooth over and over again. Don't bear down too hard or you'll get that bleeding effect like I showed you earlier. As you're, as you're, uh, as you're sharpening, you're going to want to take and just pull a little bit more slack with your hand. You can see the back of that blade. See how it does that on that roller bearing? And then that helps you actually feed in, in, into the jaws. Makes everything nice and smooth. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Okay, so you see how the predominant sparks were coming off the bottom? Off the bottom of the tooth. That means I gotta change my angle from from like here because it's hitting the bottom of the tooth to like here where it's hitting the full tooth. That's how you can tell if you're square with the tooth or not. And then I'll really sharpen the others. Okay, so what we're gonna to wanna to watch for are sparks coming from the whole back side of that tooth. Well, it might be the front side. The whole front side of that tooth should show sparks the whole thing once because, and why this is important is because you don't wanna burnish it. Trying to get that tip sharp. You want to just be able to bump it and move on. That's a lot better. And I'm raising it and lowering it with my knee with my knee and it's thick. So it does take a little bit of hand-eye coordination. And I got it to where I can do the blade in about eight to 10 minutes. So there's a tooth I just sharpened. See how there's no white <clears throat> little shiny edge to it? Oh, there we go. And there's one I haven't sharpened behind it, and the tip is rolled. 
know it's hard to see, but it's there, it's rolled. The difference between that one and then that one. You hear how it's not, it's not rough? And that one's catching? Big difference. So as you're doing this, let me shut this off, I hate to burn my teeth. Now as you're doing this, you have to realize that that tooth set back like this. So if you bump this thing and then go straight up, you're going to shave the front of that tooth off. So so as you, you bear down a little bit, and then you got to back off enough to get past that tooth, which is like a 64th of an inch, right? And then when you come up, you're not raking the top of that tip off, which I've done a bunch. And every so often you gotta pull the slack out once it starts getting hard. What will happen is it takes and it actually preloads it and actually helps feed it. That's all there is to it. Relax, don't do a lot of heavy drinking. <laughs> you're gonna mess some stuff up, man. Wear you some safety glasses or readers if you're old like me. Who wants to talk about grinding wheels? I do, I do. I've been playing around with a lot of different wheels. <clears throat> I haven't tried the, the diamond wheel yet because it's just too small. It's, it, I can't get it, 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 yeah, it's too close to the motor. So you do not want to use these brown guys. You see how it polishes it like that? And it ends up actually burning the blade before it sharpens. I wish it didn't because it's so much nicer and you don't get that, you know, every time you put in the blade, which kind of, you can't help but think that's not good for it, but it actually is. So what that means is that these pink ones, okay, and we'll, I'll show you diameters here in a sec. These pink ones are coarse and so they don't heat that tip. Um, the lighter you can do it and you know you'll, you'll get your technique down the further you, know, you progress if you're actually even going to try this. Here's another one contoured. Wouldn't recommend. Too fine. Um, <clears throat> I did sharpen one blade with it and it was just a couple cuts it got dull which meant that I ruined the temper on it. I didn't think I did but I did. So food for thought. Five and a half inches roughly. Seven eighths harbor. And I wonder if there's a diamond blade out there to try it. You know, I don't think you need water or anything because it's so quick. Um, but I just wonder what the longevity of the diamond blade is versus cost. My son got me these microphones. Uh, they're uh, ceremonic. So I was curious if there's a difference. Oh, there's totally a difference. Sound vision. Thank you, Devin. Love you. Mean it.